Warsaw, 1967. With Cold War tensions near an all-time high, the Rolling Stones travel behind the Iron Curtain for an unprecedented concert. Though their records could not even be purchased legally in Poland, thousands of young people swarmed the streets, having traveled from cities throughout the country. Rolling Stones przyjechali tylko na jeden dzień. Biletów nie starczyło. The best seats were given to the sons and daughters of high-ranking party members. They're sitting there with their diamonds and their pearls, and their fingers in their ears, said Keith Richards in an interview a few years later. Meanwhile, the true fans, those lucky enough to score a ticket on the open market, were crammed in the back, the theater at nearly double its normal capacity. According to Keith, three songs in, he grabbed the mic and said, You f***ing lot, get out and let those bastards in the back down front. And they did. The first four rows got up and left. At least, according to Keith. Some accounts describe a tense atmosphere inside the theater, with some 150 police lining the walls. Whenever somebody tried to get up and dance in the aisle, the lights would turn up extra bright and an officer would bring them back to their seat. Others, however, described a scene of blissful chaos as the crowd danced freely and wildly. The footage would seem to back this up. However, there were two shows that night, one at 5 and the other at 8.30. So it's possible things lightened up as the evening went on. Being just 11 years after Stalinism, when even jazz records were confiscated and destroyed, to be a Polish teenager now watching the Rolling Stones must have been unreal. And it was during the Stones' psychedelic phase, no less. A correspondent for NME wrote that the audience was intrigued by Brian Jones' sitar. Quote, an instrument they hadn't heard or seen previously. But it wasn't the main attraction. As Bill Wyman recalled, towards the end of their set, the crowd started chanting, I can't get no, I can't get no. It took a while for us to realize that they wanted satisfaction. And sure enough, as soon as they hear it, the crowd goes absolutely wild. And meanwhile, outside the theater, the crowd of those hoping in vain to get a ticket had swelled to some four, or ten, or thirty thousand, depending on who you ask. Facing them were over 500 members of Poland's police force, the citizens' militia, including 150 ZOMO officers, Poland's elite paramilitary division. Irritated by the shoving from officers and demoralized by the lack of concert tickets, a few members of the crowd began throwing rocks and pocket mirrors. The police responded using their clubs and, according to some sources, a water cannon. The NME article even mentions tear gas, although this was not corroborated by any other sources. Within an hour, the order is restored. Four officers are injured. Ten concert goers are arrested. Numerous car windows are smashed, as well as lamps and windows at the front of the theater. The number of civilian injuries is not reported. Mind you, this all happened while the first concert was still going on. The Stones wouldn't learn about it until much later. Upon leaving the theater, Keith Richards recalled, They've got water cannons. All the cops had white helmets and big lawn batons. They wouldn't have had a riot if they'd let the kids in. Only later I found out Poland is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. However, it's worth pointing out that many other Stones concerts had descended into riots, including one that took place the very next day in Zurich, Switzerland. After unruly concertgoers climbed the stage and tackled Mick Jagger, thousands of folding chairs were smashed by the audience. 
The police, once again, used batons and water cannons to restore order. So the idea that this could only happen in a corrupt communist country is, well, not true. However, it does make one all the more curious how this concert got approved in the first place. For a country that had only ever hosted two other western rock bands, the Hollies and the Animals, why would they pick a band that was known to cause riots, and then place them in a tiny 2700 seat theater? Well, for one, Poland was a bit more tolerant of rock music than other Eastern Bloc countries, with bands like Czerwono Czarni, who opened for the Stones that night. Not to mention groups like Chocoli and Polanie, whose aggressive keyboard garage rock sound earned them an opening slot for Eric Burden on tour. In fact, there's a whole compilation of Polish psych and garage rock bands from the 60s that I'll link to below. Although, Comparing these bands to the Rolling Stones is not exactly accurate. They had a considerably more narrow range of self-expression compared to the band who was arguably the most shocking and scandalous of the time. So it still doesn't quite explain how this concert got approved. Some say it was simply ignorance on the part of Polish authorities, not adequately doing their research while others point to the more cynical safety valve theory. The idea that if you can't give your citizens true political freedom, just let them blow off steam for a night and they'll be good communists in the morning. If this was the idea, however, it doesn't seem to have worked. Just 11 months later, massive protests would break out in Poland, led by students who were fed up with government censorship the lack of free expression on campus, and the brutal crackdowns of the citizens' militia. They were inspired, at least to some extent, by the music and books they were smuggling in from the West. The protests did not end well, which is a whole other story. But as far as the Rolling Stones are concerned, if their goal was to have an impact, that certainly appears to have been accomplished. It changed the lives of thousands of people, and spurred the imaginations of many more. As one Polish blogger put it, anybody who lived in Warsaw at the time and was between the ages of 12 and 30 claims to have been at that gig. Wild legends spread, like how, due to currency issues, the band was paid in pallets of vodka. Unfortunately, not true. Or how the Rolling Stones were officially banned from Poland because of this gig. They were actually banned a few years later, but it was due to Mick Jagger's drug conviction. There wouldn't be another major western rock band in Poland until Eric Clapton's infamous concert 12 years later. And it would be over three decades before the Rolling Stones returned, well after the fall of the Iron Curtain. So, needless to say, those who found a way into that theater on that fateful April day had quite the rare treat. Mm -hmm.